Post-processing images is one of the most important stages when you create your image. Now, it's hard to come up with creative ideas because you may have spent hours on end finding the shot you want to create, and then you can ruin the image just because you've post-processed it wrong. Now, I'm not going to show you the correct way of processing an image or editing an image, but I'm going to show you the way I like to do my landscape images and so that you can get some ideas of um, how I do it. So let's just jump onto the monitor and let's show you. Okay, so guys, we're in the monitor right now and you should see an image that I have on screen. Now, the way I shot it was I took three images and I put a image which was one stop underexposed, one stop exposed correctly as the camera out of the image and then also I put an uh, exposure one stop over. Now that's known as bracketing or the simple edit for HDR. So what we're going to do first is we're going to merge those three images to create a merger of all the dynamic ranges that I just captured, high, low and correct exposure. This is also known as HDR. Now it's, don't the typical thing in Lightroom, and I'm using Lightroom, you can use whatever program you're using correctly. I'm going to merge these images here by holding shift and clicking, right clicking and go to photo merge. You don't have to go to Photoshop for this. HDR. Now I'm not going to uh, bring them together because I've already got an exposure but I'm going to show you how I would do it. The most important thing is that you take away this something called auto tone. Auto tone will um, auto automatically try to tone it how the computer thinks it should be done. I probably would lay off that because it's a raw image, we're using four raw, uh, three raw images. This way, is you, you're masking it already. Um, I always for de-ghost de with a landscape image. You should be using a tripod anyway, um, and these were shot at quite a fast aperture anyway, uh, fast um, shutter speed in terms of landscape photography. So you probably won't need too much of a de-ghost effect on there. But I just applied the low effect just to make sure you don't get any wisps of ghosts in the background. It's not too bad if it's in the far uh, background, but if it's in your foreground it's pretty noticeable. So you click merge and it take a little while because you're using um, three raw images which are quite high megapixels and unfortunately I've only got a 14 megapixel camera so it ends up being only three, three times the 14 megapixels. But if you obviously have a higher megapixel camera, say a Sony A6000 uh, that's like 24 megapixels times 3 you can see that you're going to need quite a lot of RAM for creating that image so what I've done then um, I created the image here and this is the final image that I created now this is with uh, all the development modules I had done and I'll quickly go over how I did it so as you can see it would have been a lot more because uh, this is now a merged image now this is just the, this here is just the DNG file and there are some effects I did. Now what I did, I said it was just a tad um, underexposed so I just brought it up and with these sliders landscape photography is all about it creating an image that is real to life. Now I originally thought the saturation on the green here would have been too much but as you always reference back to your old files and it makes it easier because then you can say to yourself is it right, is it not, is it right, is it not, it makes your life so much easier. And I know that the, the grass was quite nice and green anyway, so you're recreating an image that is true to life. But I wanted that image just to be that slightly greener, and I wanted to bring out the whiteness of this um, windmill, which I captured in Ashton. Also, I like to peek in, just see if everything's focused, because then you can tell whether you're going to actually be able to use the shot or not, or save the shot. Cropping, I'm not a fan of cropping, but at the same time, if you need to straighten something up, because use the line tool and it should be fine. Fortunately, um, I was in line with Horizon, but the actual windmill wasn't actually in, um, wasn't straight, which in nature you shouldn't find any straight lines anyway. So it's not too bad as long as your Horizon's most likely um, straight. And as you can see, I've only cropped it in just a little bit where I've straightened the angle. I've done that. Uh, next, you want to go and peek in and just check for any dust spots. I'm quite lucky. There is one right here, but I've changed that in my final image. And to do that, you just use this 
spot tool. And I've, as you can see, I've just taken away that spot here and brought it. The Lightroom spot editing tool is alright for micro spots and landscape images. But if you're doing anything um, retouching wise, I'd probably use uh, Adobe Photoshop to uh, do a little bit more heavier um, clone stamping um, and that. Um, contrast, I leave the contrast tool because I use a different uh, tool for that. I use the Nick collection from Photoshop, uh, Google, and that's pretty good. I brought down the highlights because it's a general rule when you do landscape photography that you need to bring down your highlights and you'll it will sort it out. Uh, you get a lot more information in the sky in a, uh, in a final image. Now, I like to just check that my blacks are crushed just a little bit because you've got that mass amount of information with a HDR file you can then do things without having to worry about the shadows being um, destroyed and always reference back to your um, histogram because it's always important that you can check if your image is being crushed for example if I crush these blacks here though these straight lines here means that image is lost uh, the information is lost if you press J also you can see where these images have been too crushed too much and that's blue here and in, any red is where the highlights are warning so if we could press control Z and go back to where we were before. Clarity, again, be persuasive with the, uh, with the slider. I haven't touched the saturation because I thought it was, it was a poppy shot anyway. And I don't particularly like to add too much um, pop and pizzazz to my images. Um, I haven't changed anything for the tone curves. But split toning is where I like to do my own... Um, style so I like to bring nice blue sky but also I could bring I like to bring a little bit more orange because I always like to the main idea I'd like to do is to find that main color that you like in the sky so don't create something that's un unnatural create something that's real to you but you've seen a particular color in the sky and you've picked that and I want to emphasize that and today I found out this orange here was quite nice, so that's why I brought it up, and I brought the saturation up just 10 points. And then for the shadows, this is where I've used saturation. I've put the shadow into, into green, because that was the main colour I saw, and then brought that up 5 points. Sharpening, because you, again you've got an, a HDR type file, you can pop in, and you can bring that sharpening up to 76, and you will not find any grain. Um, and then also I'd like to mask it here, holding Alt, and you can see where there are some spots in the sky, and I brought them out, um, and dirt marks. But also, this white line is where it's nice and sharp, and it's being sharpening, it's being applied, and anything black is where it's not. So it means that you get uh, nice defi defined lines, and it's great when you've got straight edges. But also, you need to make sure your sky is taken away, because you don't really want to scar uh, sharpen the sky, because there's nothing really needed to be sharpened except these areas here which can be sharpened and also just be careful with sharpening if the image isn't correctly focused anyway you won't it won't do any good bring a, sm a small amount of noise reduction because my camera can only go down to ISO 200 so it means that I've got a slight amount of noise noise into my image so I can just bring it down and there we go um, I always go remove chromatic aberration this lens I used was a 60 millimeter equivalent of 24 millimeter so it and it's from Sony so the Sony anything natives your camera normally doesn't have too much chromatic aberration and you will always have a profile correction I like to have the profile correction on it because it's a wide angle lens wide angle lenses seem to have distortion around the back and softness on the edges and a bit of vignetting so I've taken that away but I do like to add my own vignette because it bring draws the image into uh, the viewer into the image um, I don't always like to add too much vignetting because again that's up to your personal uh, pre um, preference and don't need to add any grain because these are effects so no, that's what I've basically done to the image and then I move into the Nick collection and I always say you should probably go and get yourself into the Nick collection reason why is um, it's free and it's a pretty good tool actually from uh, the standpoint so we're gonna go to the final image and see how I did that now the first thing I like to do is go to color for effects pro this is probably one of my favorite tools in the Nick collection so we're gonna 
edit the copy with Lightroom adjustments. I probably would have chose the DNG file, but it will save itself as a TIFF, which is just the same. It takes a little while to process the image. And what I like to do is add, um, go to the first thing I like to do is go to Landscape Color Effects Pro because it has its own presets ready made for you. Um, but I like to pull them away. And then the first thing I do is go to my Pro Contrast tool, which is in this here. And I like to add some dynamic contrast and just play with the sliders. I personally think that's just too light, so bring that down. And just see what it does to the image. If it doesn't do too much, it takes away from the shadows. So I don't like to add too much corrective contrast. And I find that co uh, correct color cast, this mainly is for images that might have a slight color cast to them. You don't have to worry too much. And then I would add a filter. I only really add two filters to when I image make my image. And I like to go to brilliance and warmth. And this is what I learned from another landscape famous photographer called Eli Locardi. And he likes to add um, brilliance and warmth to his image. And I think on a nice sunset, it, it exaggerates the um, areas which you want. Which I like to add brilliance and warmth here on this building here, the windmill. Because it, it just shows and adds another dynamic um, element to your image. Showing that there is a real life event happening. So it's like capturing the image as it is. So I liked, because... Again, you look at the image where what is the main colour and what's the main theme. So it's a sunset, it's a brilliant warm sunset. And then I go over to here, check the warmth, and then add perceptual saturation. And you can see how it just adds it there. A little too much because this is the final image. And I'll click save. And I'm just going to click cancel there. And this is the final image, guys. So, and that's what I come out, came out with. I came out with two images in the end. Um, I like this one preferably um, over the rest. But there was a second which I did create. Was here. And I liked again. Behind I could see a, a main colour of purple. And that's what I chose. And I like that enormity that the wide angle gives you. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or comment below if you want to see more um, how I edit my images or any kind of tips and tricks. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.